I have wanted a breast augmentation for a long time. <laughs> um, I have two small kids, and so after I had breastfed my daughter, I obviously lost a lot of volume, and so I was like, okay, I think I want a breast augmentation. Um, not really like actually exploring the idea serious, to be honest. I was a single mom, I was broke, so I was like, I know I can't afford this, like, but I want it in the near future, kind of. Um, and so after I had her, um, like I said, I kind of wanted the breast augmentation, but I didn't further explore the option. So it just kind of like eventually kind of left my mind. Um, and then I got pregnant with my son and I breastfed him. And then I was just like, ah, oh, I really don't like the way that my body looks anymore. I've lost even more volume, you know? Um, I run wear my shirts confidently. I want to wear the cute bikinis. Um, I don't want to have like the flat chest. <laughs> so um, I, once again, had the thought and then I just kind of let it go again. And then it wasn't until December of 2023 where I was like, okay, next year, I'm definitely going to have the breast augmentation. Um, and so I did some research um, as far as like looking at where I wanted to go. So I was like, Color I live in Colorado. Um, Colorado's not like the number one place for plastic surgery. People are not like, I'm going to Colorado to get the breast augmentation. So I did look into some other states like Los Angeles. Um, I did look at Miami. Um, and there was another doctor, I think in New York that I looked at um, because there were a few people that I had followed on um, social media and I seen that they had a breast augmentation and really liked their results. Um, but the one thing that kind of crossed my mind a lot was like, if I have any complications, I want to make sure that I'm just a drive away from my doctor, not a flight away from my doctor. Um, and essentially like I don't have a very big village so it would have to be me and I'd have to literally like find somebody to accompany me on this trip to make sure that they can you know be by my bedside and take care of me um, so I was just like okay maybe I won't explore that option with flying out of town so then I started looking at some like local um, doctors um, and I looked at a doctor she was a female um, she was in Golden, I think, and then there was another doctor in Highlands Ranch, and then there was Dr. Broadway, and then there was another doctor um, in the Denver metro area. Um, and the one thing that I was looking at was like, okay, I don't want to spend more than $8,000. So I put that on my list, and I'm like, I don't want to spend more than $8,000. So I'm looking and I'm researching, I'm calling, like, what are your, what do you charge? Um, for breast augmentation and a lot of people were giving their prices so there was one doctor that said 8,000 another doctor said like 6,200 Dr. Broadway was on the higher end and it was like I think the quote was close to about 13,000 a little like in the 12,000 mid-range and I was like whoa I don't think I can do that so then I started doing more research and I was just like, this is an elective surgery. It's not like I want to spend $5,000 on a car that's going to get me from point A to point B. Like this is an elective surgery. You got to make sure that it's someone who cares about what they're doing, knows what they're doing, has your best interest at heart and is educated. So let's take the price factor out. So I was like, okay, I'm going to eliminate the price thing. So then I just started looking at these same doctors again. I started looking at their galleries and I would see like, hmm. Her results are good but she's i can tell she has one that's higher than the other and i was like don't like that look um and then i started looking at reviews and dr broadway had nothing but i think like 4.5 and up reviews and so i said okay that that sounds about something i can i can work with i knew i knew for a fact what i wanted my doctor's background to be i knew i wanted an older doctor because i feel like um, having an older doctor they've seen everything change like Dr. Broadway has been around when just breast implants were just saline and then it went to the gummy bear and then this and it went from that so I knew I wanted someone that was older that has um, seen breast uh, implants like kind of change and get better as time um, progressed so I started doing more research on Dr. Broadway and I seen that he um, used to teach overseas um, and he was able to um, have a few students underneath him that he attends regular seminars like just still continuing that education piece because plastic surgery is never just a one-size-fits-all it's never just like this is what it's gonna be and here's what it is like it's constantly changing and evolving as things are being produced and companies are producing um, 
these objects that we're putting in our body essentially. Um, and so I said, okay, I guess I'm gonna go with Dr. Broadway. Um, so I called and made a consultation and I remember speaking to the lady on the phone. I felt like a little kid on the other line because I'm really doing this, right? It was just a thought. I didn't entertain it any other time, but I'm like, I'm actually gonna do this. So I call and I'm like, hi, I wanna schedule a consultation. And she's like, okay, that sounds great. Hospitality was amazing. But like I said, I felt like a little kid on the other line. And so she's like, um, we can do this day, we can do this day, we can do this day. And so I picked a date in January. She asked me, um, do you think you'll need a lift? And I'm like, I'm looking at my shirt. And I'm like, um, no. <laughs> and I'm like, how will I know that? And she's like, well, can you stick a pencil underneath? And if it falls down, then you know, you don't need a lift. But if it does, then you will need a lift or something along those lines. So I grabbed a pen and I was like, nope, don't need a lift. <laughs> I just need something there. And so she's like, okay, sounds good. So she, you know, booked me in or whatever. And um, I came for my consultation and I was just like, I was super nervous because all the research that I had done was primarily on Caucasian women. There were three African-American women that I had found. Um, I thought their results were okay, but they weren't like, I wanna go to their doctor. Um, because a lot of the things that I was seeing was either like one implant was higher than the other or you could tell like the gapping in between as far as like the, the cleavage. You could definitely tell like she has implants essentially. Um, so I came in for my appointment and I didn't have any inspo pics. Um, I knew I did not want my boobs in my neck. I was like, I just wanted to look natural. Like I was in line in heaven and God was like, that, that's you right there, you know? So um, when I came, like I said, I didn't have any um, inspo pictures, but just the whole process with my patient coordinator was amazing. She walked me through everything. Um, what I really liked was um, they took measurements. And so kind of backing up a little bit, when I was doing research, I knew that I didn't want anything more than 300 cc's. But at the same time, I didn't know that your results can also be determined based upon how much breast tissue that you have. And I knew I had a little bit of breast tissue, but I didn't know that that's something that I also have to take into consideration because all the women that I seen, they were like, I have 325, I have 425. And I was like, I did not want to be that big. Like, just give me something in between that looks nice. Um, and so, like I said, they came in and they did measurements and they gave me this list of, um, the type of implant that I wanted. So I went for a moderate high implant. Um, and so it's based upon, based upon the measurements can determine like how much your chest cavity can actually hold the implant. And once again, that's something that I didn't know. I just thought you're like, yep, I want to be a full C cup and that's just what it is. And it's like, that's not necessarily how it goes. Um, so it was nice having that sheet. Um, and even my patient coordinator had told me like, you want to make sure that you stay within this range um, because you know the higher you go then obviously there is a chance that you can have higher complications or you can have risk associated with it so I wanted to make sure that I was um, making a good decision um, because it is an elective surgery ultimately um, so we came in and um, she had me try on a bra and I closed my eyes and she's like Phil which implant feels the greatest to you. And I remember she, the left implant, I was like, I do not want that. That feels like what I have right now. Give me something more. And she's like, okay. So she swapped out the implants and she gave me 305 cc's. And I was like, whoa, when I was set on like 285, didn't want anything more than that. And so um, we went in the back and we did some like AI imaging, which was really nice, which was something that I definitely appreciated because I had the visual of what my body could potentially look like. Now granted, the AI is not going to give you these results. It's just to give you an idea. So they, you could look like that, you could look better than that, but it's kind of just something for you to work with visually. Um, and so at first I was gonna go for the textured implant, but I was very afraid. And um, I was afraid because I knew that there was a possibility that there's a risk associated with the lymphoma. And I could be wrong on that, technical term but um, what I will say what I appreciated with my patient coordinator and with my doctor they both told me the risk associated with it it wasn't like he was trying to sell me this higher end implant because he just wanted to put money into his practice he was like no like 
if you want this look, you know, there is a possibility of this. And I'll tell you that in my entire years of practice, I've only had two risk with this type of implant. Um, even with the round implant, I've only had this many capsular constructures because that was a huge concern for me. I didn't want to spend all this money on something and then years down the road, um, possibly have to have it removed because I didn't make a good decision or my body just wasn't accepting of this foreign object being inside. Um, so they were both very transparent, which is something that I definitely appreciated. Um, and I will say the one thing that Allison told me because I was set on the texture. I like the look of the texture. It kind of gave that like natural teardrop of a boob. Um, when I left the office, that was the one I wanted. I was like, okay, I'll just take the calculated risk with it. Like they said, it's very minimal, like all that. But I will say the one thing that Allison told me, she said, go home and do some research. And if you feel like you're not going to be able to sleep at night because you picked this implant, I advise you to go with the smooth. I said, okay. So I went home and I'm doing all sorts of different research and I'm like, gosh, it just does not sound good. Like, I don't think that I will be able to sleep at night if I do this option. So I'm just gonna go with the smooth option. Um, and so I remember there was a promo on there that said like, if you book your surgery date within like 48 hours of your consultation, you'll have X amount of money off. So I'm like, I really gotta make a decision because this is a pricey surgery and any time that there's a discount associated with it, I'm gonna take full advantage of it. So I called and um, I asked for several surgery dates. Um, I was looking for something like in April because like I mentioned, I have two small kids. So I was like, if I can do it around spring break time, I can enjoy my downtime and I can actually take the time to heal. Um, so I picked my date for like April 11th. I remember <laughs> I picked my date for April 11th and then um, there were obviously some pre-op appointments that I had to attend. And that was the one missing component that a lot of people never talked about was the pre-op appointment. So I came in and we finalized my size. Once again, Dr. Broadway did those measurements again just to make sure that it was right. And the one thing that I was against was having two different sizes because I was like, nope, I just don't want that. I don't like that. I've seen that online and it looks very like this. I don't want that. And so he looked and he was just like, well, you know, you do have a little bit more breast tissue on one side versus the other. So what if we do 305 on one side and 325 on the other just to chase it a little bit? It was a medical term he used, chase. And I was like, okay, sure. Sounds good. Allison, she's on the side. She's like, I promise because I'm giving her the eye. Like, you knew I only wanted 285 to begin with. Like now we're teeter tottering. Like we're progressively going higher and I'm not liking this. And she was just like, I know, let me reassure you. She was like, I promise the 325 and the 305 is like, tch. she did that exact motion. She's like, the only time you have to worry about size being like very drastic is when you go up in the 100 cc's. Like if you were to go up four or five cc's in 325, then of course you're gonna notice the difference, but that small amount, you'll be fine. I said, okay, I trust you. Um, so we went over my final sizing um they did the measurements for me sent me home with this bag the doctor came in and gave me everything he told me that i was going to apply an ointment in my navel and in my nostrils um leading up to the surgery date i think it was twice a day um and it was to um reduce because i could be a carrier which he didn't know in the operating room uh i forget the term what it was but it was like to eliminate me being like a carrier. If I am a carrier that is not spreading contagiously because obviously I'm having an open surgery. Um, and then to wash my body um, from the waist up with this soap, um, it's like an antibacterial soap. Um, and then they gave me two packets of Baxitracin that I would apply for aftercare and then a small bottle of hydrogen peroxide that I'd mix half and half when I'm doing my aftercare as well, um, which was very nice because I didn't see that in any of my research of women going home with a baggie or anything. They just said, my doctor gave me a prescription and told me to go fill it and go pick it up and that's just that. Um, he also did go over prescription with me, so one was um, Percocets, um, a muscle relaxer, and then the other one was like a hybrid of like Tylenol and Advil together, I think it was. Um, if I didn't want to take the Percocets, which I refuse to take the Percocets um, just because I'm not, if I can't take anything like 
to take care of my pain management when I'm using or when I need Advil or Tylenol, then I just will tough it out. Um, so there was that. Um, then I had another appointment, which I was super nervous about was um, my blood, blood, my blood had to be drawn and I hate needles. So that's another reason why I put off getting a breast augmentation. I was like, because I know they're gonna have to give me an IV, they're gonna have to draw my blood and I just don't wanna do that because I don't like that. Um, so we did the, the blood drawing um, at my next like pre-op appointment, um, which was a couple weeks before my surgery date and everything was fine. Um, and then it was time for me to go have my breast augmentation. Um, so I had my best friend from college drive me there. Um, and it was a very clean surgery center. Everyone was super nice and super welcoming and, um, and happy and just in a great cheerful mood. Um, Dr. Broadway came in and you know he's asking me to confirm my name and all of that and the, the breast implants and confirming which side, which implant is going on which side since we had two different sizes. Um, and that was that. Um, I'll say what I did appreciate was like everyone at the surgery center obviously knew Dr. Broadway, um, but the gentleman that wheeled me into the operating room, he said that he's been working with Dr. Broadway as long as he's been at the surgery center. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Um, and he was like, you're in good hands. Dr. Broadway is amazing. And I felt very comfortable with Dr. Broadway because even when I had um, decided that I was going to go with a textured implant, I was at work thinking because I'm like, I only have like 10 hours left before I am not able to get this discount anymore. Like I got to make my decision. And I called Allison and I said, I really want to talk to Dr. Broadway because like, I'm still like on the fence. Like I really love the look of the textured implant, but the risk that's associated with it. Like, I don't think that I can just stomach that. And Dr. Broadway called me personally and he said, Hey, what's going on? You know, Allison, let me know that, you know, you wanted to talk to me. And I talked to him and he was very patient and very kind and um, very understanding of what my fears were essentially. And he was like, either way, I'm going to make you look good. And I was like, I know you are. And I always tease Dr. Broadway and say his work is perfect because all of the models that I've seen on his website, literally like beautiful, like there's no one implant is higher than the other. Like it's perfection. And he told me his work is not perfection, but I'm like, in my eyes, they are. <laughs> um, so I had my, my surgery and, and um, I went home and um, he sent me home with a band, which is something that a lot of other uh, plastic surgeons did send their home, send their, some of them did send their patients home with a band, but some of them sent them home in a compression bra. And so I asked um, Allison because um, when I initially had got my promo bag, it had different bras on there as well, which I really liked. It had a high-end bra, which was from Victoria's Secret, um, a low-end bra from Target, which we all love Target, <laughs> and then a mid bra, excuse me, from Amazon, which was like in the $30 range, um, because that's what I would be in for three months, 24 hours. And so um, that's something that I didn't know. I thought I would just be in a compression bra essentially, but I went home in a band and my implants dropped exactly where they wanted them to be. And so um, at my follow, my one day follow up appointment, Dr. Broadway was like, go ahead and go into a bra. So I went and I tried to go find a bra. Um, I went to Victoria's Secret over in Park Meadows. Now before I got my breast augmentation, I was a B32, a B32. And so I go to Victoria's Secret literally the mall just opened it's 10 o'clock right i still have my pajamas on from the surgery of the day before and i'm walking through there i'm walking through there and i walk into victoria's secret and i'm looking for an associate and i'm like hey you know i just need to get measured i just got my breast augmentation like and the associate like when i told her that she was scared she's like oh my god i'm so scared to touch and i was like i'm fine i promise i'll tell you if i'm in pain so she measures me and then she measures me again and she's like, you're a B32. I looked at her, I said, I know the hell I'm not. I will go call Dr. Broadway right now. I know you didn't give me what I came in there with. Like, I said, I can't be. 
So the bra that I was looking for was one of the bras that was recommended, which was a knockout bra. They didn't have the size anyways, which was a sign from the universe, I'm assuming. So I tell my best friend, I'm like, let's go to Target. So we go to Target and I grab every like B size, every C size, and I go in the fitting room and I'm just trying on, trying on, trying on. And so I tried on the B32 and it barely covered my areola. And like, I don't have large areola. So I was like, I know for a fact I'm not a B32. There's no way this man knew what I was before. He didn't give me B32 Bs, the B 32 Bs, boobs. So I tried on the 34C and that's what I am right now as a 34C, which I'm very happy because if I was a 32B, I'd be very upset that I spent all this money just to be a day of B32. So um, I wore my bra for 24 hours for three months straight, like Dr. Broadway told me. And he told me by month two, you're going to hate this bra. And he, boy, was he right, because I did. I hated wearing that bra 24-7. But he told me, like, this is your money. And in order for you to protect your investment, you want to make sure that you're locking them in where they need to be. He went into the medical terminology of, like, as your body is healing it's doing um i think he called it like the abc method or like the one two three method where the first layer of scar tissue builds itself up and deteriorates the second time it builds itself up and then it deteriorates and that third time it's locking that scar tissue in so that's where the implants are going to reside and i was like okay makes sense like you're the best i'm gonna i'm gonna do what you say so I wore my bra for three months straight and mind you backing up to when I wanted to get my breast augmentation I didn't know that you have to heal I just thought like okay I'm gonna get my boobs done and I'm gonna be on the at the pool the next day or the next week nope not at all that's not what the case was so I like I said I wore my bra for three months and when I came for my three month checkup which I had checkups in between and everything was healing correctly um, I will say like my third month checkup um, I came in with no bra because I was just like, it's time. Like I reached my 90 day, like it's time. Like now I can just free brawl it, you know? Um, and so I told him like, I'm not wearing it. And he kind of like gave me the side. I like, although you have reached your 90 days, like you still just want to make sure that like you're protecting your investment essentially. You don't have to wear it 24 seven, but you should wear it for a decent amount of time. And I'm like, okay, makes sense. So Till this day, I'm still wearing my bra 24 seven because I'm listening to the professional. He's quadruple certified on the board. He's done many, many, many breast augmentations. I think over 10,000. So I'm gonna go with what he knows best. Um, so I'm proudly happy that my results look the way that they do. Um, I will say with my healing, as far as like my scarring, I'm not very satisfied with my scars, but once again, all of the individuals that I've seen online, they were Caucasian women, so they didn't talk about their scarring. Um, I'm a melanated woman. I obviously have very pigmented skin, so I'm going to scar differently than others. Um, so I do have it right under the crease of the boob, um, and it's slightly darker. Um, I will say at my three-month appointment, he did ask, um, if my scars itched and I said yes they do and I tried not to scratch them because I didn't know what that was um, but uh, he applied a, he injected a steroid in both of them to, to relieve the itching which surprisingly like the itching went away immediately and since my scarring was um, a little raised and a little thicker the steroid inject injection was to help um, flatten it a bit and his words verbatim were like, you probably may need another treatment because I don't think this one treatment is gonna flatten them. And actually they're pretty flat. <laughs> I don't like the color of my scar, um, but they're flat. Um, I did utilize the silicone serum that um, came in the bag as well too. That was the same brand of my breast implants. And I used that, but I didn't feel like that was really like helping. Um, Cause I started doing that after my, um, for my aftercare. Um, so, yeah. Um, I will say something else that I appreciated with Dr. Broadway was that he only uses one type of um, breast implants and he told me why he only uses these breast implants because previous ones that he used were recalled. Um, and so he really likes his brand. Um, he talked to me like, you know, if you ever do need a, a revision because of the capsular constructure, they do provide X amount to go towards that. So. That was really nice because I feel like a lot of people 
may just, you know, try to sell you something just to, you know, and have more money into their practice. Um, but I will say that at every appointment that I had shown up for, I did see Dr. Broadway. And even in my um, agreement, it said you may not see the doctor during every appointment, but I've seen Dr. Broadway every time. He's provided me with um, more knowledge, more information and reassurance with me throughout this entire process. And it's been amazing. It was a great investment and I would choose him all over again. <laughs>